This is a key to topic 32, part D, worksheet 1. And on this worksheet, you're given some exponential equations, and you're asked to solve these exponential equations. And you're asked to solve these at, um, at a certain place value, so in three decimal places, nearest tenth, nearest hundredth, and so on. So before we look at the first problem, let's remind ourselves about the inverse properties of exponents and logarithms. So one of the um, things that you learned, and we're going to start with base A, and then we'll look at the natural base E. Remember, E is, is um, an um, irrational number that's approximately equal to 2.718. But let's look at base A for, for the moment. So if I have A raised to a power, and if I take the log of this expression with base A, so notice that, that the base of the logarithm is the same as the base of that exponential part. So if the bases are the same, then that, that expression, the log of A to the X base A, as long as these are the same, is going to equal that exponent. So you learned about that in one of the previous lessons. We also know that if I take the base A and raise it, and so let's say my exponent is this, it's the log base A of X. So if this base is the same, and if the base of the log expression is the same, then the uh, then A raised to that exponent that you see here is just going to equal the argument, which is x. All right. Now for the natural base, e, so if I have e to the x, if I have e to the x, and if I take the natural log, remember this is, this means natural log. So remember natural log, ln, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. So, so remember the, the uh, log base e of x, so if the base is e, if the base is e, then this notation right here is the same thing as saying the natural log of x. So this, this right here, whenever the base is e, that means natural logarithm. So you're looking at the natural base e. Okay, so, so notice right here, if the base is the same, this base and this base is, are the same, then it's just the exponent. So remember, the, the natural logarithm has base e. So technically, this right here is log base e of e to the x, right? And so since those bases are the same, then it's just equal to the exponent. So the natural log of e to the x is just equal to the exponent x. And the same thing if we use this idea here with the natural base e. If I have e to the natural log of x, then that's just equal to the argument. Because e and the natural logarithm already has base e. So that's going to equal the argument, which is x. Okay, And so we're going to use, in these problems that you're about to look at, we're actually going to use this idea and this idea, okay? So these two right here. Okay, so before we look at number one, remember to solve an exponential equation, you first isolate the exponential expression, then take the logarithm of both sides of the equation, and then solve for the variable. All right, and that's where you're going to use those properties of, of um, logarithms and exponentials. Okay, so let's look at number one. So number one, we have 2 to the x equals 7. So notice the exponential expression is already by itself. Now there are several ways you can do this. The, uh, the way that, that most people will do this is, is they'll take the log of both sides, base 10. So they'll do that. So I'm going to go ahead and write this over. They'll go ahead and say, well, I'm going to take the log of this side. So if you take the log of this side, you have to take the log of this side. Now remember, you don't see a base, right? There's no base there. So you got to remember in lessons that you've learned that, that if there's no base there, it's, it's automatically understood to be base 10. Okay, that's the common logarithm, base 10. All right? Okay, now, once you take the log of both sides, then you're going to use properties of logarithms. So one of the properties you learned is that when you have the log of, of some base raised to an exponent, you're going to take that exponent and pull it out in front. So we're going to get x times the log of 2 equal the log of 7. All right? And now, now, now notice 
the the log of 2 is, is actually a real number. So if you look at it, just to show you, the log of 2, so if I do, you use your calculator, press, uh, press logarithm, see L-O-G right here, log, and then press 2, and then this number, this real number, is the log of 2. So the log of 2 is a number, so think of that as a coefficient. So to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by log of 2, just like this, log of 2. All right, and so the log of 2s divide out, so I get x equals the log of 7 divided by the log of 2. Now, some students make a mistake, and, and they see L-O-G, L-O-G, and they want to cancel those out. They want to reduce those out. Be careful. That's, that's not this idea here. Um, the log of 7 is a number. The log of 2 is a number. All right, so using your calculator, because remember it did say in number 1, it did say round to two, three decimal places. So I'm going to approximate now. And so here's how you use your calculator. So you're going to say log of 7. So log L-O-G of 7. Make sure you put parentheses. you got to close it. Then say divide by the log L-O-G of 2. Close. And then press equal. And it was to three decimal places. So it's to, to three decimal places. So uh, 1, 2, 3. So you remember you always got to look at the digit right after that. Since 3 is less than 5 the 7 stays 7. So the answer is going to be 2.807. So that's going to be approximately equal to 2.807. Okay? Now here's the other way you could have done that. So let me go ahead and just show you real quick. And I'm not going to do all three ways and all the problems because of our time. But um, see how I took the log of both sides? And remember, that if you take the log of both sides, that's base 10, right? Well, notice in, in our lessons that we've learned, there's a, a log and there's a natural log. So, so you could also have taken the natural log of both sides. So, oops, so let me go and rewrite this over. So 2 to the x equals 7. So I could take it, taken the natural log of both sides. So remember, natural log has base e. Log, the common logarithm, has base 10. So same idea, you're going to take this exponent, you're going to pull out in front using properties of logarithms and exponents. And so I get x times the natural log of 2 equals the natural log of 7. Getting x by itself, you can divide both sides of the natural log of 2. And the natural log of 2 is divided out because those are the same real numbers. So x equal the natural log of 7 divided by the natural log of 2. And then approximating that, you should get the same thing as this. So watch. You'll get the natural log this time. So the natural log of 7, close the parentheses, divide by natural log of 2, close the parentheses, equal. And so you get the same thing. 2.807. All right, now one more way you could have done that is this. So notice the base is 2, right? So the base is 2. So let me go ahead and do it here just to show you. So, so let me go ahead and rewrite this. I should have put more space. All right, so, so remember when you took the log of both sides and there was no base there? That's understood to be base 10. But if the base is 2, you could take the log base 2 of both sides. Log base 2 of both sides. So this 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 base 2 comes from this this base of the exponential right here. And then remember one of our properties we saw, just to show you, one of our properties that we saw was was that when the bases are the same, see right here, then it's just the exponent. So you see how these are the same? So it's just the exponent. So x equals the log of 7 base 2. And then that's where you're going to use the base change formula. So remember the base change formula. So the base change formula says that that it, that if you have, um, let me go ahead and write it like this, the log of B base A, I'm sorry, the log of A base B, then that will be the log of A divided by the log of B. So using the base change formula here, this will be the log of 7 divided by the log of 2. But notice this is this, right? So that is the same as this. So you're going to get approximately equal to 2.807. Okay? All right. So um, so that was numbers uh, number one. Okay, let's look at number two. So number two, I'm going to go ahead and use another sheet of paper. So number two, we had this. And the way that most students will do it will be they either take the log of both sides or they take the natural log of both sides. That's the way most students will do this. So they'll say this, uh, 4 to the x minus 3 equal 9. 
All right, so notice the exponential expressions by itself. And so we will take the log of both sides. So you'll say L-O-G, L-O-G, right? The natural log, so base 10. Now, using the properties of logarithms, you're going to take that exponent right here, pull it out in front. But notice that that's a binomial, that's two terms, and the one we just did was one term. Since this is two terms, you have to put that in parentheses. x minus 3 times the log of 4 equals the log of 9. Now, the way I would do this, first of all, is I would isolate this variable expression right here. So I would, I would divide both sides by the log of 4. That's why I would do this. Log of 4, just like this. And then the log of 4 is divided out. So you have x minus 3 equal the log of 9 divided by the log of 4. Okay? Now, remember, you want to round this to the nearest tenth. But what I would do first is I would get x by itself. So notice I'm going to add 3 to both sides now, just like this. So you get x equal the log of 9 divided by the log of log of 4 plus 3. All right, now let's let's approximate this nearest 10. All right, so let's do this expression first, and then whatever that is, we're going to add 3. Okay, so here we go. So you're going to say log of 9, move your calculator, L-O-G, log of 9, close the parentheses, divide by log of 4, close the parentheses, and then add 3. And then, and the nearest tenth, to the nearest tenth, so here's your tenths place, you have to look at the hundredths now, since that's 5 or larger, eight's large, uh, five, 8 is greater than or equal to 5, you're going to add 1 to this tenths place, so it will be 4.6, 4.6, okay? All right, so that was number 2, not that difficult, very simple to deal with. Okay, let's look at number 3. All right, number 3, we have 2 e to the x is equal to 10. Okay, so now notice that that um, this variable expression, this exponential expression rather, is not by itself. I'm multiplying it by 2. So the first thing we have to do, remember, is to isolate the exponential expression. So I need to get this by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 2. So I'm going to rewrite this over. And so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. The 2's divide out, so I get e to the x is equal to 10 divided by 2 is 5. And then you see how we're using the um, natural base e? So now what you need to do, the easiest way to do this, is to take the natural log of both sides. Because remember, the natural log already has base e. It's understood to be base e. And so, and so one of the properties we learned was this right here, that the natural log of e to the x is just equal to that exponent. So this is just x. So x equal the natural log of 5, and then approximate that. And they wanted you to approximate that to the, let me go ahead and find the page. So they wanted you to approximate that to the nearest hundredth. So to the nearest hundredth, the natural log of 5, natural log of 5, just like this, equals to the nearest hundredth, so this is the tenths place, this is the hundredths, and this, since this is greater than or equal to 5, the 0 becomes 1. So 1.61. 1. 1.61. 1. All right. Number 4. Okay, number 4. This is our problem number 4. We have 6e to the uh, 5x equal 11. So remember, we got we got to get that exponential expression by itself. So I'm going to have to divide both sides by 6. So it's right now multiplying by 6. So I'm going to rewrite this over and divide by 6, just like this. All right. Now, do not make the mistake and approximate this. Leave it as 11, 6. Always approximate at the end. Don't approximate anywhere before the end, just like I did this one. All right. So I get e to the 5x equals 11 over 6. Okay. Now, remember, you want to get that, that um, you want to solve for the variable. Well, the variable appears in the exponent. So what we're going to have to do to get that, that um, uh, exponent, that variable expression out of the exponent is we're going to have to take the natural log of both sides. Okay, now notice I put that in parentheses because parentheses, 11 6 is a fraction. Okay, so now I can pull this out in front, right? Or I can use the fact that, that just like I did here, 
the natural log of e to the ver uh, to an exponent is just the exponent. But you can also do this. So, so you all know that, that a natural log of e to the 5x, since this base is e and the base of a natural logarithm is e, is going to be the exponent. But you could, you could use that property. You could say 5x natural log of e. But we know the natural log of e is 1, and 5x times 1 is 5x. So I get 5x equal the natural log of 11, 6. Leave it like this. Don't do anything else. Okay? Don't use your calculator at this point. Now we're going to divide both sides by 5 to get x by itself. I'm going to divide both sides by 5. I get the natural log of 11, 6 divided by 5. Now let's use the calculator. Okay, so here's how you use your calculator. You're going to say natural log, natural log, 11 divided by 6, just like this, just like you see it. Okay, close the parentheses. Then you're going to say divide, divide, just like that, by 5. Press equal and to the nearest tenth, they want the nearest tenth, so here's the tenths place, here's the hundredths, since two is less than five, it stays one. So the answer is 0 0.1, okay? All right, let's look at number five, the very last one. So it'll be another one just like this one. So number five, we have um, seven e to the four x is equal to 22. And this time, they're going to want you to round to the nearest thousandth. Okay, so we got to get that variable expression by itself. So I get to divide both sides by 7. All right, that'll be your next step. Divide by 7, just like this. 7 is divided out. So I get e to the 4x equal 22 sevens. So leave this 22 sevens. Don't put a decimal right here. Okay, now, remember, you're, you're trying to solve for x. Well, the, the x is appearing in the exponent. So to get that, that variable expression out of the exponent, since this is base e right here, I'm going to go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. Notice I put parentheses here. And then the natural log of e to the 4x, based on one of the properties you learned in a previous lesson, the natural log of, of e to an exponent is just the exponent. So the natural log of e to the exponent is just 4x. So 4x equals the natural log of 22 divided by 7. And then to get x by itself, you can divide both sides by 4, just like this. And then one more step, and you're done. That's where you're going to use a calculator. So on your calculator, you're going to say the natural log, natural log, right here, of 22 divided by 7, just like this. Close the parentheses, and then you can divide all of this by 4. So divide by 4, and then to the nearest thousandths, so tenths, hundredths, thousands. You got to look at the next digit. Since this is less than 5, it stays 6. So the answer is going to be approximately equal to 0 0.286. Okay? And so that is, that is the key to um, this worksheet on solving these exponential equations where the bases are not the same. Notice all the bases are different. Okay, so that's the end.